All right, so now let's take a look at the ER70D's live view menu. So the live view menu are these two tabs here. All right, so basically on the first live view menu tab, we have live view shoot. Enable and disable. Obviously you wanna enable it because if you disable it, you simply can't go into live view. And we will have another entire chapter on AF methods in live view. So let's skip that for now. Continuous AF, you want to simply disable that because if you enable that, the AF in live view mode would simply just go nuts. It will focus at anything that's in the focus area and it just jumps back and forth and it's disturbing and distracting and annoying. So let's disable that for now. Touch shutter, disable, enable. So um, when you enable touch shutter, and you go into live view mode, you can simply take the picture by touching the screen. So that's touch shutter and we have grid display. So you can set um, what grid you want to overlay on your live view. So you have 3x3, three three, uh, 6x4 and 3x3 three three plus a cross. So I would recommend the 3x3 three three, or if you don't like a dirty messy display, you can just simply set it to off. Aspect ratio, 3 to 2 is the native aspect ratio um, of the EOS70D CMOS sensor. So basically you want to just leave it at 3 to 2 for maximum image area. Of course you can also choose it to 4 by 3, 16 to 9 and 1 by 1 which is square. So good for some Instagramness. But still, highly recommend leave it on 3 by 2. Now, exposure simulation, you can either enable it or disable it. So if you enable exposure simulation, it will basically simulate the exposure of the settings that are currently applied. So let's say if I change the shutter speed, it will darken it um, proportionally, change the aperture setting and change the ISO. So it will adjust according to my settings and it will simulate the exposure actually quite um, accurately. But let's say if you are um, using extension tubes or you don't want the live view to simulate the exposure, you can just disable it. And regardless of what settings you put, the exposure simulation will not be active and the screen will simply display a bright enough image for you to preview. Now, this is during um, depth of view preview. That means exposure simulation will not apply until you press the depth of field preview button. Now I forgot to mention this in part one, but the depth of field preview button is actually down here near the grip. So uh, very sorry for um, forgetting that, but this little button here is actually the depth of field preview button. Moving on, we have a silent live view shoot. You have mode one, mode two and disable. So when it's disabled and you are in live view, Taking the image tends to make quite some noise. Now, if it's on mode 1, it's significantly more quiet. Now, if it's in mode 2 though, mode 2 works in a very different way. So, if it's in mode 2, you press down the shutter button, it takes the shot, but the shutter is actually still loaded. and to reload the shutter, I just take my hand off the shutter release button and the shutter is reloaded and it is ready for another shot. So let's try that again. The shot is taken. So basically this gives me some time to sneak away from my subject to some other place um, and I let go and it makes a second tick. So basically it isolates the two ticks instead of just one tick like in mode 1. But I personally find uh, mode 1 a lot um, better to work with. And of course we have the metering timer. Um, the metering timer is basically how long the metering will stay on. So let's say um, the default is on 16 seconds. So if it's on six, uh, 16 seconds and I initiate the metering by half pressing the shutter button. So um, the metering will keep metering for 16 seconds and after 16 seconds the metering shuts off. So basically, you have a lot more durations to um, set, but um, I leave it on 16 seconds. 